Welcome to the Snatch Waste Show. This is your host, Sally. First question, Lily, do waste trainers work? You're not gonna get long lasting results from wearing a waist trainer. By squishing your vital organs close together, all you're gonna do is cause them damage and on top of that, you could even crack a rib. And don't even get me started on the digestive system. You're actually hindering your digestive system, which is the polar opposite to what we're trying to achieve. And what are your thoughts, Teddy? Waist trainers don't taste like chicken. That is correct. Final question. To snatch your waist, do you need to be working out as well as eating well? So to burn fat, you basically have to be in something called calorie deficit which means that you are burning more calories hello teddy than you are consuming you need to be burning calories through working out and consuming enough calories to fuel that workout but slightly less than you're burning so the answer to that question is yes you have to work out and eat well sorry to break it to you do you like carbs teds Oh, so like mother like son. One minute of real talk with you right now to give you the facts. There is so much information out there, which I'm sorry to drop the mic, but it is BS. Like I was scrolling through articles, newspaper reviews, YouTube videos, and some of the stuff that is out there, like you shouldn't be eating carbs, frustrates the hell out of me. Alex, mm-hmm. how many carbs do I eat? All the carbs. All, All the carbs. the time. I am a walking carb, so let's start off with carbs. You do not have to be on a low carb diet to achieve a small waist or a flat stomach. It's just not true. You do, however, have to be thinking about the types of carbs that you're eating. The types of carbs that you want to be going for are your whole grain type of carbs. They're the ones that are high fiber and whole grain. They've actually been proven to help reduce belly fat. Whereas refined carbs that are found in white pasta, white bread, they have a lot of additives in them and they've actually been scientifically proven in trials to increase belly fat. I am the biggest enemy of the word avoid, apart from like if it's like an ex-boyfriend or something, sorry Alex, but do not avoid foods. You need to be replacing foods. So when you see articles that say, avoid these 10 foods to get a flat stomach, I call BS guys, I call BS. You should not be avoiding foods. You should be replacing them. So when it comes to protein, you need to be taking in lean proteins such as chicken, fish, turkey, and I'm not gonna use the word avoid. In moderation, fatty red. How many of the uh, red meats do you eat? Zero, I don't eat meat. <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm avoiding them. That means I chose not to. Hear it, tell me one word that you think of when it comes to this. Gas. Yeah, not gonna lie. <laughs> Vegan cheese. Okay, we don't even need to go any further, but I, I think I fart every two steps. Like, it's ridiculous. I can <laughs> You're the same though. Yeah, I'm probably been... everyone's step. Yeah. But anyway, on to cheese. Cheese, unfortunately, tend to be high in saturated fats. It doesn't bother me all that much. I'm not a huge fan of cheese. I do love halloumi, but Tira loves cheese. And I think most people watching this probably love cheese. So again, I'm not gonna tell you to avoid it. Instead, perhaps have it in moderation and replace it with the healthier fats like nuts, oils, avocado. Bananas? No, not bananas. Salmon, get those omegas in. Milk and other dairy products. Now, getting into Zeke Geek Zone, Zeke Zone, Geek Zone, Lily, I wish I had my glasses, but imaginary glasses. Basically, studies have shown that as we get older, our stomachs, or a lot of our stomachs, struggle to digest lactose, which is in most dairy products. That can cause an aggravation in the stomach, which basically causes bloating, and again, buzzword, Gas. So you can replace a lot of your dairy products with nut-based products. I love nut milk. And yes, six months later, I still haven't found a place for an ironing board. Ta-da! One thing I am gonna say, I do want you to avoid all alcohol, never go out, never have fun, and just basically stay in. And <laughs> Guys, I'm not gonna tell you to cut it out. Why would I do that? But I am gonna say, please think about moderation maybe for many reasons. But alcohol obviously can be quite calorie dense depending on the type of alcohol you're having. So just something to bear in mind. Anyway, let's go and sweat out last night's vodka in the gym. Just kidding. If you had a heavy night last night, you probably shouldn't be going to the gym to sweat it out. I used to though. <laughs> Exercise, of course we can burn fat, but we can't squat reduce fat. Basically, we can't choose where we're gonna burn the fat from on our body. When we're on a treadmill, we can't be saying in our mind, oh, I'd love to burn the fat from my stomach, but replace it into my boobs. It's not possible. But don't hate me right now for saying that. What we can do is exercises, workouts that are gonna burn 
fat and burn a lot of calories such as cardio, HIIT workouts, HILIT workouts. These are the type of workouts that are going to get you sweaty and burning a lot of calories in a relatively short space of time. Coupled with that, you want to be doing workouts that are going to build your muscle. I'm talking resistance training girls, we've got to be using weights. In my opinion, not always necessarily really heavy weights, but to sculpt an X frame, this frame right here, we need to add resistance. When it comes to your waist, you can't physically change the anatomy of your rib cage. If you're trying to, it's highly likely it's dangerous what you're doing. However, you can decrease the amount of fat on your stomach area, which will pull your waist in and you can tone areas around it as well as your waist. Now I'm talking about these bad boys right here, an area that us girls tend to neglect a lot. What you wanna be looking to do is build the shoulders and the back, build the hips and the booty so that you create an illusion of an hourglass shape. I'm now gonna show you nine exercises to help you achieve that hourglass frame. Three for the shoulders, three for the booty, and three for that snatched little waist. Girls, I hope you're ready, because it's gonna burn. First up, we have a shoulder press. We're doing 10 reps, three sets. And with this, you wanna make sure you're coming down to 90 degrees, keeping the rib cage down. And then from a side view angle, you can see that my back is flat into the bench rather than this overarch position, which is really bad for the back. Single arm row. So we start off by setting the shoulder blades together. We're then gonna draw the shoulder back and up, squeezing the shoulder blades together, making sure that you're really controlling the movement throughout to feel those muscles engaging. Flies, you're hitching forward through the hips, keeping the core really nice and tight. And as you lift the arms up, you're squeezing the shoulder blades together, making sure that the back muscles are engaged. Reverse hundred, so lying on your stomach, you're gonna squeeze the butt muscles, squeeze the core muscles, and squeeze the back muscles as you pump the weights up and down. Keep looking down. Swiss ball dead bugs. You want to imprint the spine, keep that lower back flat in the mat, chin tucked to chest, core tight, eye gaze forward. Swiss ball side plank, this is tough. We're hitting the obliques here by rotating the arm in towards the elbow and back up. As you can see, my core is having to work really hard here and I'm also working the side core muscles. To make it a little bit easier, you can come down into a full plank, make sure you're rotating all the way under like you're trying to feed something to the person or imaginary person behind you. Reverse oblique crunch. Here we're going to be working the lower abs and the obliques, the muscles on the side of the waist. As you draw up into a reverse crunch, you're going to rotate the body and lift up. This really burns. Don't forget to breathe. Hip thrusts with the booty band. One of my favorite lower body exercises for building the glutes. What you want to do is make sure that the knees are staying wide, the tailbone is tucked under and you keep looking forward. I do a slight hold at the top here to make sure that you you're really engaging the glutes and you're keeping that time under tension. That's how you're gonna get results in those booty muscles. Split squat, so I've added the band here to make it that bit harder. I want you to make sure that as the knee is dropping down, it's as close to 90 degrees as possible. You're taking the body weight slightly forward to make sure you hit those glute muscles. Elevated curtsy lunge, so you want to spend as short a time as possible with that foot on the floor. Drive up through the heel of the standing foot, working the outer booty, core tight. If you do want more workout videos that are going to help you to achieve that X frame, I actually have a free hourglass guide. Totally free. All you have to do is go to my website, basically subscribe, and you'll get sent the guide with links to the videos. Just please know that anything that involves waist trainers, cling film wraps, or any of these quick fixes are not going to work in the long run. Oh, one other thing. Are you guys interested in vacuums? That is something that I don't know a huge amount about, but I have heard that they're actually pretty beneficial. If you would like me to do a vacuum challenge, working into vacuuming around the stomach, please do comment down below and I'll get that done for you. Please don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. Also hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it. You don't want to miss out. Right guys. Mm -hmm.